catch up as say it will be going on there. But this session uh, is all around uh, just introducing uh, some very powerful tools for transforming data uh, in Microsoft Excel. Uh, and it's a feature which surprisingly quite a few people don't actually know it exists within Excel. Um, and it can save significant amounts of time uh, in using it. Now this session, it shouldn't last the full hour, it usually is about 20 to 30 minutes, quite a bite-sized session, it is that introduction. Um, I could speak all day on Power Queries, but usually it will overwhelm um, anyone if I go into too much detail there, but it is just that introduction. And what I say is have a go with it, uh, start playing around with data uh, within Power Queries, um, and usually people find they, 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 can, they start to discover certain features and then what you can actually do. Now, what is um what 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 is it? So basically, uh, normally when we are working with data, um, we're all probably familiar with using Excel. And what we need to do is we first need to get hold of our data from wherever it might be. It could be some database somewhere, a website, um, an email, whatever it might be. Uh, and then we need we may have to then copy that, paste it into Microsoft Excel. Then we're going to start clearing it up, removing columns, rows, maybe adding columns and rows, maybe doing some calculations. And that can take hours, if not days, to get the perfect uh, data set that we can then analyze. Now, that's where Power Queries comes in, because we can let it do all of that work for us. And as I say, it really does save a significant amount of time. Now, as I said, Power Queries is a data transformation and data preparation engine. So let's just go straight in, find uh, where Power Queries are. So firstly, we need to get some data. Um, so I've got a um, Microsoft Excel um, document open here, just a blank document for the purpose of this presentation. To bring data into Excel, there's a number of ways that we can do that. So to begin with, we need to go to the tab at the top of the page called Data, because we're going to bring some data in here. Uh, and then in the top left hand corner, you'll notice there is a ribbon that says get and transform data. So there's a series of tools in there. Uh, what we want to do is we want to actually get our data from somewhere. So there's a number of ways to say you can do this. So you can either do it from a file so you, that you've saved onto your computer. Uh, so it might be already an Excel file you have already saved. Um, and also Excel have now bought in the ability to um, import data from a PDF document. So you may have been sent a PDF document, you might have downloaded a PDF document, saved it to your computer. You can now import the data from that PDF. And again, number of ways you can do this, you can do it directly from a number of online databases and other sources. So quite a few ways. Now, I'm going to make it simple. I'm just going to load uh, an Excel workbook, so a sheet that I've already saved. Um, and it's just some data that I've I've been using for the past two years to do this presentation. You'll see it's quite outdated, um, but we're just going to go in and use that data today. So when I click that, we'll just give it a moment. It can take a few seconds, depending on how fast your internet is or your computer at the time. Um, and I'm just going to down bring in a data sheet that I've saved. So I'm just going to hit import. Um, and then it's going to load that um, and it will open up a window for me any moment. So we'll just, again, give that a few moments just to load. Um, and again, it can take a few seconds. So once you've done that, uh, you'll see the file in which it's saved. So you can actually import multiple documents into Power Queries and work on multiple at once. Again, very helpful if you're working with very large data sets. I've only got one in this case, just to simplify things. So I'm just going to select uh, that sheet. It just shows you what it looks like. So this is my data here. Um, and I could just load that straight into Excel. If I did that, it's almost like copying and pasting it in. It will literally look exactly like this. And on first glance, you can see there's some columns which don't really have any benefit to me. There's also a column here with two different uh, pieces of data in there. So I need to do a bit of work to this before I can start to actually analyze any of the data. So in order to do that, you then want to hit transform data. So not load, uh, you want to hit transform data. So I'm going to click that. And then this will open up our Power Query editor. So we'll just give that a few seconds to load. Again, 
Um, just need to give it a moment to open. I'll give you a quick tour on this. Now you can see straight away, it's telling me that this is an old spreadsheet. Yep, that's fine. Uh, there is an option to refresh spreadsheets and get another beneficial um, part to Power Query is you can work on live data. So if you're you're bringing in data from a website or an internet, uh, sorry, a web page that's being edited, you do have the option to refresh the document and it will give you the new data set. So very beneficial. And it does tell you if the data is out of date and to check if it has been edited or not. Now, over the left-hand side of the page, this just shows us the, the uh, sheet that we're working on. So I've just got my one document open here. I said you can work on multiple at once. Um, and then over to the right, you have uh, different settings that we can use uh, in here. And also we have our applied steps. Now, applied steps, very useful. It's like a timeline. So every time you make an edit in Power Queries, it will appear in our applied steps. And if we want to reverse any of those, we can literally just click the small X next to this step that we've applied and it will reverse it. And I'll show you a bit more detail if we go through. Now, the top of the page, we have this toolbar. Uh, again, very much like Excel. This way you find all of your different tools. Um, for Power Queries, lots of different tools in there. I certainly won't go through all of them today, um, but you can see we've got different tabs. Uh, lots of different tools adding columns. So really we can build out entire spreadsheets in here, ready to analyze rather than doing it in uh, Excel. So we go through some very basic uh, features here uh, and I'll take you on to how I can actually analyze that very quickly as well. So as I said, on first glance, uh, you can see uh, just down here, this is where our actual table is and this is where we can do all our edits. Um, these two columns here, they're pretty irrelevant to me. They, they, they don't have any figures in there. So I'm just going to remove those so I can just click on um, the column that I want, or I can hit shift my keyboard and select both. Um, and then I can remove those. So either I can right click. Uh, so I can right click on the column and I can remove the column. Or as I said, I can select both. And on my toolbar at the top of the page uh, up here, you can see there is an option that says remove columns. And if I just press that. And again, you need to make sure these are highlighted in green. If I press that, it will delete those columns. And you can see that has been added to my applied steps. So if I didn't want to remove those columns or later on, if I suddenly realize I actually need one of those columns back, uh, I can just hit that X uh, and it will reverse the step for me. And you can see they're back. Um, but we, we don't need those. So we are going to just get rid of them for now. Now, a few more things in here that I don't need. So this organization one, uh, let's delete that one out. Um, and also I'm going to move the date so you can move columns around. Now, usually in Microsoft Excel, without the help of Power Query Editor, uh, you would usually copy an entire um you might, might copy an entire row or an entire column, um, and then you need to paste it in the correct place, which might involve moving other ones around. And if, you, if you've done formatting to make it look like a table, uh, it looks all nice. It can mess things up, and it takes time to fix that. Now, again, Power Query Editor, we can just move things around manually to do it for us. So if I, if I don't want the date here anymore, I can click on that, and I can just drag it to the location I want it to appear. So I want it to appear here. And you can see, there we are. I've just literally clicked and dragged it around. So I put that there. That looks nice. Uh, we'll keep the members. That's okay. I need this one. Uh, date completed. You can see we've got two different data sets in there. And if we were to run any calculations, it's going to prove a bit problematic um, because in Excel, when we run calculations. It does it based on the cell. And if we've got two different bits of data in that cell, it's going to be hard to actually recognize what's going on there. So we'll, let's separate these two. And again, if we were to do this in Excel, we would need to apply a uh, formula, uh, which can take a bit of time to find that. Um, or in Power Query today, we can simply press one button and do it for us. So again, I want to separate these two pieces of data, this date and the time. Um, so I'm going to go to the top of the page where it says uh, split column. I can also right click on here uh, and look for the option uh, in here. Uh, but nice and easy at the top of the page, we have split column. So if I give that a single click, uh, it will tell me how I want to split it. Um, in this case, I want to do it by a delimiter. Now, what I mean by that is it will, uh, I can specify uh, what it needs to look for in order to split the column. So 
Uh, let's just click on that and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see we've got split column by delimiter. Um, in here, you can see there is a space between the date and the time for all of these. So I'm just going to click this top drop down and click space. So wherever it finds a space, it's going to then add in a column, separate them. So if I click OK, and there are a few different options you can do in here to separate data, but we're just going to keep it nice and easy and do space. You can also um, customize it so you can quote what you want in there. Um, but again, just going to keep it easy, do space, and then I'll hit OK. Uh, and you can see it has now separated those into two different columns because it, it identified them with a space between each, uh, and then it just separated both. Now I can use calculations to work both of those out. And again, you can see that as applied to my applied steps. And if I didn't want to do that, I can literally just press the X um, and I'll delete that step. Uh, oops, uh, I'll tell you what, I accidentally went ahead of myself and deleted too many steps. So uh, let's just delete that quickly uh, and we'll go back. So there we are. Um, so I've just deleted that step and it has brought that back into two columns for me, as you can see. Now, again, I don't actually need that um, this 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 here. So I'm just going to, again, just delete that one out. Um, and this looks good. This looks like uh, what I need to actually work with the data. So I just drag that one in place. Uh, and this is how I want my spreadsheet to work because I want to analyze how many people attended each of these sessions. And I can figure that out by how many times each of um every time the word appeared in here. So for instance, the Twitter session, if that appears multiple times, I can add those up and that's how many times they were completed. I can also see who completed them and on what date they were completed. So nice, nice uh, pieces of information to use to analyze. Now there are so many more things you can do in Power Query. You can create new columns, you can do formulas, but I'm not going to get into too much detail because I want to show you how you can now use um, the edited um, table uh, in Power Queries to uh, analyze it again very quickly. So to do this, all you need to do uh, once you're happy with how it looks is in the top left, you just click close and load, uh, and that will then load the spreadsheet you've just worked on straight into uh, Excel. So there we are. I've got the spreadsheet here, uh, exactly how I've just worked on it. Um, and from here, um, I now want to analyze that data. And I can do this through a feature in Excel known as pivot tables. Now pivot tables, they are used to quickly summarize very large amounts or really any data. And they can be used to better understand, um, display and analyze numeric uh, data in detail. Now what it will do is it will do all the calculations for me. It can work everything out in a split second and I can filter the results as well. So I can just keep checking different results um, and really analyze that data set. And it's a very useful tool because it saves me now having to spend hours doing calculations and keep doing new calculations if I wanted to find certain things out. So how do I use a pivot table? So you need to go to insert because we'll be inserting something into the document. In this case, it will be a pivot table. Um, just want to highlight what I'm actually going to be uh, using. So it'll be these four uh, columns here. Um, so I'm just going to click and drag over those. So I've highlighted it. And in the top corner, you can see it says pivot table. So if I just click on that, uh, it'll bring up this this. Um, Pop up, it'll ask me where, what range I want. Again, I clicked and dragged so it knows from A to D, anything in there, it's going to build a pivot table for me. What you can do is you can build the pivot, pivot table in your existing worksheet. Um, it can get a bit uh, condensed on the screen if you do that, because it, you will be needing to work with this and the pivot table all on one screen. So I'm just gonna do it on a new worksheet. So down here, a new worksheet will open and I can just flick between the two. So uh, I'm just going to click new worksheet, click open, um, and it's taken me to the other worksheet. So don't worry, the data set is still here. Uh, I'm just gonna go across to sheet two. And this is my pivot table. now. There really isn't much going on at the moment. Um, it's a very blank pivot table because I actually need to build the table to tell it what I want to analyze. So for instance, let's start by building some rows. So uh, I'm going to do the title of each session uh, that I run uh, and I'm going to put that as a row. 
So you can see, I just literally click it in here and drag it down to rows. And you can see immediately it's built me a row of my sessions. So I've got that row in there, perfect. What do I want as columns going across the screen? Well, I want the dates because I, I want to know how many people attended each session on a certain date. So I want those uh, dates running across my screen. So to do that, I need to drag dates into columns. And you can see I've just dragged that in here. And if we just look at my uh, pivot table, so I just shrink this, you can see I now have the row, which is the sessions, and the columns, which are the dates. And you can see I'm building this table rather than manually inputting everything uh, or copy and pasting it in there. I can actually just click and drag and it'll do it for me. Now, now I want it to do some calculations. So I want it to tell me how many people attended each of the sessions on these dates. So what I'll do uh, for that is I'm going to drag the badge option, which is the session. That's what I've ID'd it here. I'm just going to drag that into values. You'll notice immediately something goes wrong here uh, and I will show you how to fix that. So I've dragged that into values and values is where you can do formulas. Now, the problem here is it's given me an ID for each session rather than actually calculating how many people attended the sessions. And then what it's done is it's, it's added up the value. So none of this data is useful to me. All of these totals are completely useless. So I need to slightly alter the equation in here. Now, if I drag this back out, I'll show you how to do that. So I've added this sum of uh, badge, in this case, that's sum of sessions. Um, I'm just going to click that drop down arrow in here. And there's a few options in here. Now, if I want to change the calculation, there is an option right at the bottom that says, value field settings. And then here you can tell it what formula you want it to run. So instead of being in Excel, typing out a formula, you can just literally click it in here. So instead of doing a sum, I wanted to do a count. So I wanted to count how many times an ID appeared on specific dates uh, because I've got my columns and I've got my rows. It should do that automatically. So I'm literally just gonna change that to count I want it to count for me, give me a total, and then I'm going to click OK. And there we are, perfect. So now it's given me the correct figures here. And you can see uh, it gives me a total, uh, and then we've got grand total, how many people in total, uh, and then over the month, how many people attended each of these sessions. So from this, I can now sit and analyze date by date. I can look for trends in there. Um, there's quite a lot of data. And as I said, you can actually filter uh, this right down. So for instance, I might want to know how many people attended the Microsoft Office sessions, uh, which is one that I'm running right now. So if I just click on the drop down arrow, you see there's drop down arrow for columns and rows. If I click there, it allows me to filter. So I'm just going to untick select all. And in here, I'm just going to tick all the ones that say Microsoft before them. So you can see I've ticked those. If I hit OK, it will now tell me exactly how many people attended each of the Microsoft sessions on certain dates. Now, I might want to filter that down even more to say just the first seven days of this uh, March in 2022. So I'll click again. I'll unselect all of those and I will just choose the first seven days. I press OK. And now I've really condensed that down and I've just got that snapshot of how many people attended sessions on Microsoft uh, Office programs on for, in the first seven days of March uh, for 22. And I can look at that trend. It, it gives me a total and a grand total. And as I said, you can build lots, you can uh, evaluate or analyze lots of different data sets, especially if it's a huge spreadsheet, just by using those filters and really filtering it down. And from there, you can then bring in another um, another uh, tool in Excel, which is a pivot chart. So it will build a chart based on a pivot table. So again, because I want to insert a chart into here, you may use a chart to showcase that to people. Again, I'll go to insert. And from here, you can see we have pivot charts. So if I click on there, um, and it will ask me what range I want. So again, we'll just highlight that range. Um, and we want to bring in that that pivot. Uh, sorry, I clicked a pivot table. We'll, we'll cancel that. So uh, we don't we don't want to pivot 
uh, table, we'll do a pivot chart. So again, we'll just highlight what we want to use. We'll click pivot chart. Um, again, you need to make sure you're highlighting the table, otherwise it doesn't know where to get the data from. So before you click pivot chart, and that goes for pivot table as well. Uh, and then from here, you can choose uh, a number of different graphs that you want to use. Let's just do the classic uh, cluster column and hit OK. Uh, and it's now built me a spread uh, a chart uh, showing what this data looks like. And you can copy and paste that somewhere else. And this basically just shows the volume of people completing, um, um, how many people completed uh, each of the sessions you can see on the uh, ninth of the month we actually had quite uh, sorry on the we had quite a few people doing uh, certain sessions certain dates you can also filter these down so you can change what each of these represents so again we can filter dates in here uh, and we can also change the titles so again it doesn't just have to be microsoft uh, in here we can deselect or select all of it um, or unselect all of it. We can just choose, say, these three and press OK, and then it will return me those results. So really useful tool. As you can see, what, because I did that in the pivot chart, it also changed my pivot table. And so you can use those filters to analyze different data sets. As I say, Power Queries and Pivot Tables are a data transformation tool. They're used to save you significant periods of time. Um, and I do recommend uh, you go and have a go at this. Anyone on this session or anyone listening to this uh, on YouTube, definitely do have a look um, into this. Just start off with a simple spreadsheet, um, play around with it. Or even if you have spreadsheets saved, maybe a PDF document, bring that into Power Queries, see what you can do with it, and then go ahead and create a pivot table or a pivot chart. As I said, quite a bite-sized session. Um, I could go into a lot more detail, but it, it can get quite overwhelming. This is just introducing these uh, features, which I found very beneficial. Um, so that really is everything from me today. So um, again, thank you very much. Just in your comment there, thank you. Uh, again, if you've got any questions, please do pop them in the chat. If not, thank you.